We've had a few cross peculiarities in Gundam history. Cross stores like on the IOTA Gundam and the Helmut Ranker, and cross weapons like on the F90 Warbird and the narrative Gundam Apex. But nothing is as peculiar as having the fuel filler cap there. It's like having to fit a catheter after every single operation. It's funny, but I get chills every time I think about it. What is going on guys, MJ2005 gonna here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the P-Bandai High Grade Barzam Advanced Zeta Reboot version from Advanced Zeta Reboot Gundam Inlay Black Rabbit Had a Dream. The first of the Advanced Zeta Reboot kits in the market, and certainly won't be the last. A disclaimer before I begin though, a subscriber has planned to give me the red version of the kit alongside a bunch of other stuff for my birthday. But, unfortunately, they encountered health issues and were admitted to the hospital right around when the package would be sent out. In other words, the red Barzan will be here eventually, and we can only wish them a speedy recovery until it is. Another thing is how I accidentally deleted the photos of the full runners from trying to delete bloopers on my camera. I apologize for that and I will make it up to you when the red one arrives. But anyways, this kit comes with 10 full runners alongside a slightly large sticker sheet and a minuscule peel-off decal sheet. Other than expressing bafflement towards the discontinuation of water decals, you can expect a simple and straightforward yet fresh build as the parts are completely new to this kit. There are a few tiny pieces, but beginners and beyond should have little trouble getting this assembled. Straight away, the finished product looks absolutely stunning. The Titan's blue complements the orange, black, and red, and the light grey frame brings a little bit of light to the overall color scheme. Color separation is also beyond what you would find in a normal high grade, with parts like the mono eye, which does glow under UV light, lovely, fuel filler cap on the crotch, knee vent details, and the orange vents and circles on the shins being all separated. Though the more minute details like the whites on the drum frame, rear skirt vent, the smaller vent and grey detail on the shins, the grey fillings on the side vents, the grey centers of the circles, and the detail under the rear leg thrusters are all made up of stickers. It isn't all that bad given the high grade budget, but the ones on the drum frame just looks a tad awkward with the multiple folds. Now the reason I got this version compared to the original is due to the more realistic proportions. I never took a liking to the original's blocky and cartoonish design and color scheme, but the Advanced Zeta version refined the blocks and darkened all the colors, and what resulted is a more sleek and slender design which blends the weirdness of the Barzan design with its Gundam Mark II roots, and the model kit reflects that very accurately. The only flaw I could think of is how susceptible the blue and black plastics are to nut marks, but the gates aren't in places that are too tricky to clean up. Overall, this kit is an absolute looker and worthy of a place in any Advanced Zeta collection. Standing just shy of 14cm tall to the top of the head, and 17cm to the top of the mohawk, it is taller than the average Gundam. While it may be in the typical Titan's color scheme, it's the first time in a long time since we've had a non-Gundam design from Advanced Zeta in high grade form, so it does stand right out. Moving swiftly along to articulation, first of all beginning with the ball joints and the sideways neck joint in the head so it can jam out to some tunes. It doesn't necessarily go up, go down slightly, side to side very good, and a full rotation. But something to keep in mind is that the mono eye doesn't move, it's fixed, so there's no mechanic, you can't move the mono eye, but you do have good side to side rotation anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. Now the arms over here can swivel out decently, the shoulders can swivel up decently, and it's on a ball joint so you can kind of roll it around, it can fully rotate all the way around. The arm joint over here is kind of peculiar because you don't really get too much out of it, but swivel it up, you can get over perpendicular if you couple it with the ball joint, that is, right above the elbow which provides the elbow rotation, and you can have it rolled around just to have a broken joint in there. The arms can of course bend on a double joint which gives decent results. The wrist over here has a wrist joint slightly, you can pivot it, and the wrists themselves are on ball joints as well. Now the waist itself, it does have piston movement in the waist over here if it can focus, so you can swivel it up and down, you can see the pistons actually moving, it's not fake. And it is coupled onto the torso with a ball joint, so you can do a little bit of rotation, a little bit of ball jointed crunching, not too much. There are no front skirts nor side skirts, and the back skirts themselves are on a clip joint, so you can swivel it up just as far, but if you put it down, it often goes loose and sometimes it just gets stuck. On top of that, the top flap over here is on the clip joint, so you can pivot it slightly to allow for more movement of the bass skirt. 
And with that out of the way, the legs themselves, you do have a forward and back swivel separate from the waist. The legs can go forward, basically a full forward kick, going back decently, going out to the side, not the full splits unfortunately, but because of the thigh armor design, it's basically expected. Now there is a slight rotation of the thigh because of the joint, and a double jointed knee, the first joint doesn't really provide too much, it only provides a minute amount, and a full rotation back, so you can get an over 90 degree bend, which is definitely a nice thing. Now the ankles over here, they can go forwards and back very tightly. There is a slight ankle rocker and a slight ankle rotation, and the toes do have slight movement. Now moving on to the backpack over here, the backpack is connected onto double ball joints in the back, so while it is not customizable, it does have decent adjustability. And the thrusters are fixed, thank god. Articulation of the bar zam is definitely very good, and the lack of polycast means it can hold itself together very well. While I would ask for more upward set movement, it's not necessarily a complaint as it is not Bandai's fault, but absolutely tighten the clip joints on the back skirts. For accessories, it only has a pair of holding hands, so it's slightly lacking in hand options for those that would like to display it dynamically. For weapons then, we begin with the beam rifle. Though similar to the original Barzan's rifle, the elongated prongs refines the design and makes it look less awkward. Everything is made with plastic, but I would have wished that a pink sticker for the scope is included. Moving parts include a stationary handle and a double jointed arm at the end, and you can simply sandwich the handle into the hand before plugging the hand back into the socket and the connector onto the bicep for use. Thankfully, because of the rifle's arm, arm articulation is not hindered at all. Moving on, we have the beam sabers. They are pretty standard, save for the pole on the hilt, and you can stick the included SB13 beams in, and the kit can hold it with a fairly solid grip. There are no storage options, so the ziplock bag is the only alternative. Not that you have any in the arms with those thin plates replacing the original's holsters. Finally, you have the Vulcan earmuffs. You have a red sticker on its side, and you can easily slide them onto the head to bulk it up and let it listen to some snazzy music. Now, a genuine Advanced Zeta fan, no matter how knowledgeable, would ask, is it possible to make the TR6 bars M2 with this kit? The answer to that question is, yes-ish. While you can connect the legs and baskets to the TR6 with no adapters, the arms require the adapters with thick pegs and tape to be attached, and the final product looks rather dodgy. However, don't be discouraged yet, as if we take a deeper look at the plates, the C plates have gates to crop off the helmet and thigh armor, leaving the beam sabers as the only leftover parts. I won't complain about that if I'm honest. The B1 plates can be reused entirely, only resulting in a few leftover parts, while the hands from B3 and basker hinge and rifle parts from B2 could be molded onto a new plate. And while the A plate would have the most leftover parts, it's neither the first time nor the worst example of a large amount of leftover parts from repurposing the same parts. So, if I put my tinfoil hat on, it is definitely likely we'd get a kit of the Gundam TR6 Barzam 2 in the future. All they need is a new upper body for the core Gundam, the discs on the hips, tell me in the comments below what they are, and the grenade launcher attachment for the beam rifle. It's only a matter of time. Speaking of leftover parts on the Barzam kit, you only have an extra fuel filler cap, so you have an extra one in case the other has gone missing. To conclude, it never ceases to amaze me how great this kit looks with the simple construction. The color separation given the budget and the spot on proportions make this thing look sublime. While the sticker count is sensible, the ones on the drum frame don't look too good with the folds. Articulation may be inferior to the original high grade, but it is up there for what it is. The overall body structure and weapons are solid too, but the only blemish is the clip joints used on the baskers being a bit too loose. They never seem to get the hang of making ones that work, do they? Otherwise, because of this kit using fully new pieces and having sensible gate placements, the build is fresh to experience, fun to build, and awesome to see the colors and mechanics come together. Though you might want to take extra care with the blue and black plastics. The price of 2200 yen is reasonable as well, with only one leftover piece and a fantastic kit right out of the box. It is absolutely worth it if you can get it near that price, though a pair of open hands would have been appreciated too for that price point. 
At the end of the day, it averages a 9.5 out of 10 based on the original price. However, I would drag it down slightly if it were based on scalper prices. But anyways, it is an absolutely outstanding kit that I'd recommend for you to get if you have the chance to. Who knows, maybe we'd get a Gundam TR6 Mars N2 based on this kit in the future. And that basically wraps it up for the review. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you did like it, please be sure to drop a like, comment, and also subscribe for more Gunplay reviews, Gunplay news, and all that kind of stuff. Turn on notifications for future content alerts if you haven't, and I'll see you all in the next video. Hang loose and peace out.